Good morning, this is Brent with Likens Motorsports. We're going to talk about oil pans and pump setups this morning. Um, got a, well, I decided to change, change up some things on my 397 tunnel port. We're still waiting for crankshaft to get here. But um, the way that the, the cam tunnel is laid out, um, the oil will basically fill up into the lifter valley. And um, I was planning on just having the heads drain to the pan and the valley drain to the timing cover area. But I thought I would try something a little bit different. So um, what I did was I had Kevco put in a pickup and a fitting for a external wet sump. So an external wet sump, wet sump, easy for you to say, uses an externally mounted pump and it pulls from uh, a pickup that's been welded inside the pan. So the, the pickup depth has already been finalized, uses a dash 12 fitting. Um, you pull the pump into a, an external um, oil filter adapter and then you pump it back into the engine. Um, so what I did was had ABA uh, come up with an external wet sump pump. I should have pulled it out of the bag before I started videoing. I don't, I just don't learn. Hold on now. So we have an external wet sump oil pump. Um, normally you just need a, a suction side and a pressure side, but this one has an additional scavenge side. So what I can do is when I mount that to the motor, I can run a hose up probably to this area here and pull scavenge from the lifter valley. So all the oil that will drain there will be pulled and returned to one of these external drains. Um, so that prompted me to think, well, let's talk about, let's have a video about um, oil pan setups. The, the most typical oil pan setup, setup is just a, a wet sump oil pan. Uh, uses Typical oil pump is driven by uh, the distributor. Pickup that's mounted to the pump. Pull oil from the pan. Pumps it out through the filter back into the engine and disperses it through the engine. Uh, the pros of this is that it's uh, probably the cheapest and um, there's a lot of different applications uh, different pan designs, different oil pumps, that sort of thing. So, you know, you can pick up an entire setup, you know, for, you know, pan and a pickup, uh, anything anywhere from a factory, you know, pan that you can get a replacement for, for under a hundred bucks or something like this Mylodon pan. Um, that's, you know, almost $400. So the, the price range will vary. And you have your, your standard volume pumps, your high volume pumps, your high pressure pumps, that sort of thing. The, the con of this setup is that you can easily uncover the pickup in the pan. So we do things like um, uh, variable gates and baffles inside the pan to keep the, the pickup flooded with oil. Um, in situations like road racing and, and that sort of thing, um, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's common, but there's the possibility for the pickup to not be submerged in oil. So, um, there's limitations to this setup. Um, in, in extreme situations, we move to a dry sump pan. And a dry sump pan, I'll throw up some pictures to show you some stuff here. 
Um, the oil pan is basically, it just covers the, the pan rail of the block. Um, there's no sump to it. You have multiple fittings on, on the side of the pan. And then you have an externally mounted dry sump pump. Now, dry sump pumps are driven by the crank. Um, you don't have an oil pump inside the engine. And we usually either uh, drill and tap the feed for a pipe plug or we make nice little billet aluminum covers like this to cover the hole in the block. So dry sump pumps are rated by uh, what they call stages. Uh, you always have a pressure stage and then the rest of the stages are uh, scavenges. So they pull from various parts of the engine and deliver the oil to the pump so they can be pumped back out. Um, so uh, for instance, a four stage dry sump pump will have three scavenge sections and one pressure section. So in something like that, you would have um, three, three scavenge fittings on the oil pan and it would constantly pull from, from the engine at all time. You also get into um, five and six stage pumps. So you have one pressure stage and then either four or five scavenges. So you would have those same scavenging ports and then you can also scavenge from the lifter valley, from under the valve cover and that sort of thing. So the pros of a dry sump setup is that uh, you always have oil pressure. You could almost literally drive the car upside down and you would have oil pressure. Um, the second pro is that uh, dry sump pumps, good ones, pull vacuum on the crankcase. So that lets you use thinner rings, um, gas ported pistons, that sort of thing. Um, it's very common to pull 15 to 20 inches of vacuum on an engine with a dry sump pump. So that's horsepower, and you're also just pulling oil from all over the engine, and it's very, very, very unlikely that you will have a dip in oil pressure with a dry sump pump. The cons of a dry sump setup is that they are very expensive. Um, you have the pump, the, all the mounting brackets, the pulleys and everything to drive it with, the belt to drive it. Um, you have to have a tank to hold the oil. It's an external tank that you mount somewhere in the car. And then you'll very likely have probably three or $400 worth at least of AN hoses and fittings. The, that sort of thing gets expensive real quick. So the difference between the two uh, kind of in the middle is an external wet sump pump and the pro of that is that you can mount the pump externally obviously it's driven by the crankshaft and you can adjust the pressure on it uh, without having to take the oil pan and the pump out you can also add those scavenging sections to the pump and you can pull oil from elsewhere in the engine so the cons uh, is that um, you have something else mounted to your engine that you have to, you know, uh, make up hoses for. Uh, you have a little bit of expense there. Um, you have extra room or uh, you have, you're taking up more room, so you have less room, I guess. Um, and then the expense. So this stuff isn't too cheap. Um, you can use any, basically any, wet sump pump that you want, but you have to have it modified with a weld-in pickup. And then uh, the pump and the bracket and and all this hardware and everything will probably cost you fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars um, $1,600. You will very easily, getting back to the dry sump, you will very easily have four to $5,000 in a dry sump setup. So in order of pricing, uh, your wet sump stuff, you know, you could have literally two or three hundred dollars all the way up to a thousand dollars then you have your external wet sump uh, to go up th from there and then the dry sump to go up from there so what i'm going to do in this video um, i'm going to show you how to mount uh, the external wet sump stuff 
uh, AVA comes with uh, Ford FE right side mount oil system. It, um, let's see, how does this work? It will bolt to the timing cover bolts, it sits right there, and then your pump mounts to it. So I'm gonna try to get this mounted up and uh, measure and see what we need for hose lengths and fittings so I can get those ordered lately, uh, later on. Okay, so we're doing a mock-up on our setup here. I've just got some just uh, mock-up bolts and everything, and the pump is mounted. This is how everything will, will sit. Uh, there will be um, a pulley here, and then instead of a, a balancer spacer, they offer this balancer spacer. Um, I'll have to, I think it goes this way. So that would go inside your seal, and then your pulley would drive off of, off of that. I think I'll have to wait until I get the, uh, the crank in there. Uh, from what I'm seeing so far on this particular uh, external wet sump pump, uh, we may have to mount the blade behind this mount right here to get the pulleys to line up. All right, so we got our pulley mounted and I uh, forgot to mention earlier that one of the benefits of the external wet sump and a dry sump is that you can prime the pump at any time. Uh, the belts are not meant to be extremely tight. You can literally just slide those off and prime the old pump with a speed handle or something like that. But uh, I've got a couple of questions in an email to Aviate about some fitting sizes and that sort of thing. And then um, all I have to do is plan on how I'm going to route my AN hoses. Um, we've got a scavenge in, so this will come from either, I haven't decided here, or the back that will scavenge the lifter valley. That will pump out to a hose on the side of the oil pan. And then we have our scavenge or yeah pressure side scavenge from here and then the pressure side will go to our filler filter adapter so just some few details to work out and then we'll have this nailed down hopefully our crankshaft will be coming anytime but um starting to look like something all right guys i'm gonna bag all this up and uh, head in for the weekend. So hope you're doing well and uh, hope this was informative about the three different um, ways of, of, of oiling your engine and um, may give you some pointers on your next build. Be sure and hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll see you guys soon.